Hey everyone, uh, just so you know, I am not driving. I'm sitting here in the parking lot waiting for Diane to come out from shopping. And I figured I'd uh, do a little recap video from last Sunday where we were talking about breaking the shackles of our minds. And uh, we talked about Moses and the Israelites. And I thought it was very, very important for us to look to scripture for um, that, you know, the, the people that really, really were enslaved for 430 years um, and the significance of that is prior to that they were the chosen people of God they were um, fulfilling the promises given to them by to Abraham and and then they became enslaved and for 430 years all they knew was um, just forced labor and oppression and then um, Moses is, is sent to, to set them free, and God shows up in amazing ways, does all these miracles. And, and then from time and time again in the Old Testament, you just hear the stories of the Israelites when they're complaining, and they actually say things like, I'd rather go back to being a slave in Egypt. And it's like, you, you hear that, and you're like, how can they... Um, how could they ever, ever, ever want to go back to being enslaved? And we talked about um, sometimes the, you know, that which we don't know, we just don't know. And they didn't know what it was like to be free. They didn't know what it was like to enter into the promised land. They hadn't gotten there yet. It was just talk of that. And all these kids knew was that their parents had been slaves and their parents had been slaves and their parents had been slaves. And so they just figured that's what they were going to be. And so they had no imagination for what was possible, even though uh, God had shown up in such miraculous ways. So let's look at our lives in light of that, because I put forth the premise that all of us have our minds shackled because we get sucked into um, like this way of life, right? The, just the routine of life where I would imagine for most of us, especially if you have young kids, that the routine is something like this. You wake up at 6 a.m., you get the kids ready for school, um, you know, they have breakfast, you send them off, then you go off to work, you come back five, six o'clock at night, you get the kids ready for dinner, get them to do their homework, get them to put to bed, you have an hour to yourself, and you watch some TV and you go to bed. And that's basically all we do. And then some of us, we live for the weekends, right? Where we look forward to Saturday and Sunday so we can quote unquote have some free time and some fun time. So if we do that, how can we live on mission? How can we help bring the kingdom? How can we help give our lives to a cause beyond ourselves? greater than just taking care of our family. And of course, that is vitally important. But God calls us to do so much more than that. And I think that we're shackled in that way because we kind of buy into that's just the way it is. And it doesn't have to be that way. And especially if we follow Christ, he's challenging us with the Great Commission to go and make disciples. He's challenging us with this idea of bringing the kingdom and, and living fully for him. And that means that we have to have a cause beyond ourselves. That means that we have to care for people and do what we can to help set other people free. And, and so that leads me to what I really wanted us as a church to get, because at Stone Coast Community Church, we want to be concerned about the other. And that starts in our church family, you know, where we want to be able to take care of the needs of the family. Um, you know, people are struggling in our church that we want to be able to walk through the pain with them and be there for them to help them come out the other side of that. That's vitally important. But at the same time, that's just kind of like the beginning. There's a call on our lives to go out into the community. And so there was three things that I put forth to us to consider. And one of them was what we're doing with Baldwin Elementary School through Dawn Pratt. And we talked a little bit about that and the the importance of helping these kids be able to read um, by grade three. And the uh, importance of that long term, it was astronomical. So we talked about, can you carve out two hours of your time to be able to give back to the community so that these kids have the hope of being able to go to college and bettering their lives in the future? Then we also talked about Highlander 
uh, where we meet at the church. And those students, uh, primarily about 60, 70% of them come from inner city Providence. And we just talked about there's a cycle of poverty there. There's a cycle of, um, if I'm a young man, there's the uh, temptation of getting involved in gangs, the temptation of selling drugs. If you're a young woman, there's a temptation of, of, of having, um, you know, having a child out of wedlock as a teenager, um, maybe becoming a stripper or a prostitute. These are all ways be that they want to survive and make money. And so I challenge us as a church to say, we're going to team up with Highlander with their mentor program that can also be an internship and help these young people uh, learn more options, that there's other things out there, there's good job opportunities, there's pathways to college that they can take. And as a church, we want to be able to come around them and support them and encourage them, but also look for business opportunities so that we can help them find good paying jobs. And I just feel like the, the long-term consequences of this are phenomenal, that we can help change lives by coming around these young people and pointing them in the right direction. So that's something else that we're gonna be pursuing. And then we also talked about partnering with a, a village or a town in a third world country, and that's gonna take a little longer, um, but we do, we're gonna be building relationships with folks that are already um, in a third world country and just looking for opportunities where we can serve and, and start discussions and, and start to build a relationship with, with folks from third world countries. And so I hope that you are excited about this vision and that you want to be participating alongside us. If this is something that you'd like to have another conversation with me about or you have um, you know, your own business or you know other people that might want to be a mentor and be able to have students to intern there, please let me know about that. Um, so we're excited about what's going to happen in the near future. And so um, we look forward to seeing you Sunday where uh, we're going to be starting a new series that I'm excited about. Um, but you all have a great weekend and we'll see you Sunday.